In today's video, we are going to set up CloudBCI using LDAP as the authentication source. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. In most organizations, there's some sort of centralized authentication service. That might be Active Directory, it might be SAML, it might be LDAP. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Why should you use a centralized authentication service for your CI controllers? Well, it boils down to one thing. Business. It's not really a technical solution, although it is. But it's really business. And beyond that, it's security. What happens when you onboard someone to your company? They get a credential set up inside of Active Directory, inside of LDAP. They're given that credential. What happens when they leave the company? That credential is moved off to you know, an alumni section. It may be moved off or deleted. Any of those things can happen. However, if you're using Jenkins' own user database to set up people, that means it's on you as an administrator to work hand in hand with your onboarding and offboarding people within the company to make sure that your CI user database is kept up to date. How often does that really happen? It's a lot of extra work. You don't want to do that. That's what it boils down to. You don't want to do that. So let's offload all of our authentication off onto LDAP, and we will, at least for the time being, take control of the authorization part of the story. Now, here's what we're going to be using today to set this up. I have a CloudBees CI Operations Center and a Client Controller. The Operations Center and the Client Controller are both running 2.277.2.3. When they were installed, I used install suggested plugins. One of those suggested plugins happens to be the LDAP plugin, and it's currently at version 2.4. I also have an LDAP server set up. Now, my LDAP server isn't set up to what I would call enterprise grade. It's very open, probably not what you would run into. As we're going through this demonstration, be sure to pay attention to what does work for me and understand why it may not work for you. To get started, let's take a look at configured global security for both our operations center and our client controller. Now, right now, when I set up both the operations center and the client controller, I created a user called cbadmin. That happens to be the same user for both of them. So if I'm taking a look at the operations center, which is what we have here, I'll say manage Jenkins, configure global security. And right now we're using Jenkins' own user database. And this user, user database is scoped to the operations center. If I was to take a look at my client controller, I'd have to log in again. And if I take a look at manage Jenkins, configure global security, Again, we're on the client controller. We've also have selected here Jenkins' own user database. We want to be able to get rid of that and move towards using LDAP. Before we continue, I'm going to go ahead and log out of both my client controller and my operations center. I'm going to step back into the operations center, go to the controller, click on CM1, and it asks me for a login. I just want you to see right now that these are two completely disconnected instances. One's an operation center, one's a client controller. Okay, so now we're set up within our operation center. And for those of you that were watching really close, you saw on the operation center that we have configured global security and we have LDAP. Okay, that's pretty simple. Notice that the server syntax is server name or IP address or server and port in case you're not using the default port for LDAP or in case you're using LDAPS and potentially with a server and an extra port. So whatever your domain name is that you're supposed to integrate with with your LDAP service, if you're not running your LDAP service and realistically you probably are not, then you need to know what that is. In my case, all I need is an IP address. 
because my LDAP service is running on the default port. So now I have my server defined. And you'll notice that there really isn't anything else here. That's just the basics. So let's first see if the basics will work. We also have this button down here called Test LDAP Settings. So let's click on that. What Test LDAP Settings gives us is the ability to test without having to actually log out and then potentially break things. We can make sure that we're actually binding with our LDAP prior to saving, which is a really powerful thing to be able to do. So if we type in the user Sam, Sam is the user that I have defined inside of LDAP. And Sam's password is Sam. Real secure, right? So what we can see here is when we clicked on OK, we see that the authentication failed for user Sam. So that means either it's not working or we need to configure a few more things. And the way we would configure the other items is advanced server configuration. Now, in my case, since I prepared this for you, I know the item that I need to define is root DN. And for me, that value is right here. Make sure I don't have any leading or trailing spaces. Nope, that's all good. And for me, that's all I need to add in. If you don't understand what a root DN is, your LDAP administrator will. So if you're trying to figure out, okay, what value do I put here? Go talk to your LDAP administrators. They will give you the right information. Other trick. If you have other systems that you're maintaining or you work with other teams that are maintaining integrations with LDAP, you might want to go talk to them instead of going straight to the LDAP administrators. They may be able to give you all of the extra information that you need in order to configure this. They may know that, oh, by the way, you need to change user search base to X, or you may need to change group search base to Y, or you need to add in a group search filter because of some reason that was prior to your time starting with a company. All of those things can potentially add up. So for the moment, the only thing that I'm going to set is a root DN. So before we do anything else, let's go back down to our test LDAP settings. We're going to use our user Sam again. And now we can see that the authentication was successful. We got a user ID of Sam. We have the full user DN which is great. We have a display name. We have an email. Now, where does this username or the user display name and the user email come from? Well, let's define right up here. Within your LDAP, these two fields are what attribute it's expecting to lift this information from. In the case of display name, it's looking for an LDAP attribute called display name. In this case, it's all lowercase. Your LDAP systems may be case sensitive, they may be case insensitive. So I would recommend once you know what the attribute is within LDAP, you change this value to match whatever it is inside of LDAP. In your case, display name may not even be a real value, but maybe in your case, it's full name or some other type of attribute that you could use. Also, I have mail. So this is the email address. That's what we see right down here with user email. So within my LDAP server, for each person I set up, I have a display name attribute and I also have a mail attribute. I have a number of other attributes as well, but those are the two that are key for testing this part out. So right now we know that we've connected directly to our LDAP server. We're able to authenticate using our SAM user. SAM is just SAM. SAM, there's nothing really special about SAM other than SAM is a user inside of LDAP. Let me take you one more place. Right now, when we did this test, we authenticated against my LDAP server. Or did I? My LDAP server does not require authentication to make a query against it. Is that good? That's a question for you. In your environment, that may be completely okay. In most environments, 
people want to have some sort of bind credential prior to being able to making a query against LDAP. That seems reasonable. So what does that mean? How do we do that? Well, what we do is we define a manager DN. Notice it says manager DN and not manager username. And then we define a password. In my case, the manager DN is associated with a user that also lives inside of LDAP. So we have Sam and we also have admin. Now this admin user was set up when the LDAP server was created, but it's just yet another user. Nothing really special about it other than it was there when it was created. Notice that the manager DN is not just admin. It is a full DN. So that means I have the user and I have my full DN. So it's all right there. Now the password fortunately is just really simple. In my case, that's password. So again, before we save, I'm going to test the LDAP settings. Use test LDAP settings over and over again until you know that what you want to test is actually working. So you can take a look at this and see, oh yep, still successful. Sam, all, all the Sam things are good, but this time it was using a manager DN. So this time, instead of making an unauthenticated query against LDAP, now we're making an authenticated query against LDAP using this admin DN. The other thing you could do in case you're having some questions, okay, is it going to work for everybody? This maybe seem a little extreme, but maybe you have somebody come over and sit down beside you and you say, hey, uh, I want to make sure that you're going to be okay. So let's click on test LDAP settings and have them just log in right here. That might be a way to quickly test before going off and saying, okay, yep, it's all good. Now let's click save. But in our case, we're going to hold on just for a second longer before we click save. Notice that we are currently logged in as CB admin. Remember, CB admin is a user inside of Jenkins' own user database. CB admin, Jenkins' own user database. CB admin, not in LDAP. Keep that in mind. Let's click on save. Now you'll notice when we click on save, we are still logged in as CB admin because we were the ones that made the change. Again, that's completely okay. No big deal. Let's go ahead and log out. Now at this point, we are logged out of the operation center. In fact, let's go ahead and double check our client controller. Nobody's logged in there. That's good. Let's try logging back in as CB admin. Now we get an invalid username or password. What does that mean? Because we've set up LDAP as our authentication source and CB admin is not a user inside of LDAP, therefore we receive this message, invalid username or password. Let's log in as Sam. Because we know Sam, through our test LDAP user, worked. Click on sign in. We were able to log in. If you look up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see Sam Smith. That's our full name. Let's click on Sam Smith and then click on Sam Smith here again. And now we're on the Sam Smith detail page. We can see the full name, display name. We see the user ID. And we also see the groups, in this case, the LDAP user groups that Sam Smith, the Sam user ID is associated with. And in this case, it's net device users. Let's click on configure. We can see here in full name that Sam Smith is mapped back to display name. If we scroll down, you'll see email and you'll see that Sam at example.com, which was the email address associated with the Sam user automatically populates this email address section. Now let's go over from our operation center into our client controller. Let's see what happens. So we click on dashboard, we click on controllers, and we click on CM1. Now we're headed towards CM1, but it's asking us to log in again. 
What does that mean? Well, simply, it just means that we're not logged into the client controller. And if you remember, we haven't set up any way to share authentication between our operation center and our client controller yet. So how do we do that? Now we could go into our controller, log in as CB admin again, and set up LDAP directly on our controller. But why would we want to do that? That means anytime we add a new controller or we make changes to maybe the manager DN or the manager password, we would have to go around to every place that uses those values and update them. We have a way to do this with the operation center to simplify the sharing of our authentication source. So what we're going to do is go back up to our operation center. We are going to click on dashboard, manage Jenkins, and we're going to go down to configure global security. And if we scroll down to the section called Client Master Security. We are going to change Do Not Enforce Security Settings on Masters to Single Sign-On, Security Realm, and Authorization Strategy. Okay, so far so good. Let's click on Save. By clicking on Save, what that does is it has the Operation Center notify any connected client controllers that they should use the authentication and the authorization from the Operation Center. So let's now see what happens when we go back over to our client controller. Let's go to Dashboard. Let's go to Controllers. And let's go to CM1 and watch what happens. Now we are automatically logged in to our client controller with Sam Smith. Here's the thing. It's very, very important. Go back to the very beginning of what I said when we did the installation. Both the Operations Center and the client controller have the LDAP plugin installed. If for some reason the LDAP plugin was not installed on your controller, then this would not have worked. So anytime you are using authentication that is not Jenkins user database, you need to make sure that that plugin, whatever it may be, whether it's LDAP, Active Directory, SAML, you need to make sure that that plugin is installed on the Operation Center and each of the controllers that are connected to that Operation Center. Not only do the plugins need to be installed, they need to be installed at the same version. So in this case, I have LDAP 2.4 on the Operation Center, and I also have LDAP 2.4 on the client controller. If we take a look now on our controller and go down to Configure Global Security, if you think back to what we saw at the very beginning of the day, we saw Jenkins User Database, LDAP, whatever the other ones were, but now we can see that for the security realm and for authorization and pretty much every other field here, it is managed by Operations Center Security Policy. And that's it. To reiterate, why do you want to use LDAP or any other type of centralized authentication service? Number one, as a CloudBees administrator, the last thing you want to be doing is managing usernames and potentially passwords or helping people reset their passwords. That is what LDAP, Active Directory, SAML services are for. You don't need to be doing that. Take the time, integrate your CloudBees CI environment with whatever your organization's central authentication service is. As a CloudBees CI administrator, you already have enough work to do. Don't let user management be one of those things anymore. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.